Hello, I'm Dr. Derry Keats, and I'm still here with you uh, talking about human homeostasis. Now, I want to spend a little bit of time uh, today um, clarifying the role of the nephron, because when we talked about uh, the role of the nephron in the kidney in maintaining water balance or osmoregulation, I think that we left out some things that would perhaps help uh, you understand a little bit how it functions. Now, um, so if you look at the at the structure of uh, or the, the the way in which we illustrated the nephron, it looks like it's uh, embedded in nothingness here. Uh, but in in actual fact, there is um, a lot of tissue that surrounds the nephron tissue, and this tissue is called the interstitium. I-N-T-E-R-S-T-I-T-I-U-M, interstitium. Now, uh, this uh, interstitium is important in the process. In addition to that, um, there are also a lot of blood vessels that surround and, and interface with the, uh, with the nephron. And so there are two areas where there is exchange between the uh, nephron and uh, the surrounding environment of the kidney. And that's the interstitium, the surrounding tissue of the nephron, and the blood vessels that surround and, and interface with the nephron. Now, remember that we have a number of parts uh, of the nephron here. We have the glomerulus, the blood vessel that interfaces to the nephron, we have this tennis ball-shaped structure, uh, the Bowman's capsule, uh, with which the, um, the glomerulus is, is the interface. And then we have various other structures here, like, uh, for example, uh, this twisty bit here, this twisty bit. Do you remember what it's called? It's called the proximal convoluted tubule. And then we have another uh, twisty bit um, that's a little bit further away. Uh, from the from the uh, proximal convoluted tubule, uh, and that's uh, this bit here. Remember what that's called? It's called the distal convoluted tubule. And then uh, we also have the loop of Henle. Do you remember where the loop of Henle sits? Yes, the loop of Henle is down here. So this is the loop of Henle, which passes into the medulla and then back up into the cortex again. And these three different regions, and then of course there is the collecting tubule over here. And now these three different, re these different regions of the, uh, of the nephron perform different functions. Now we don't have to go into the detail of those functions, and you don't need to, to understand the detail of the mechanisms, the physiological mechanisms that make the nephron work. But it occurred to me that if you just look at this picture and you look at it on a white background, it looks like this nephron is just a thing on its own and it stands by itself. Now, remember that we, um, uh, that we looked at um, the detail <clears throat> of the Bowman's capsule and, uh, and the uh, glomerulus and how they interface and how there's exchange and how... Uh, the liquid component of the of the blood comes out into the um, comes out into the nephron uh, tubes via the the Bowman's capsule. But what we didn't do was point out that there are blood vessels that surround, and you can imagine this blood vessel here surrounding and and being an in, being intimately interfaced with the tubes of the, um, of the nephron. And so there is, um, there is both uh, excretion, there is both, um, um, sorry, reabsorption and secretion uh, that happens in this, in this area. And, and this interface is as a result of the, um, sorry, I can't draw here, 
Uh, this interface is a result is a result of the interface between the blood vessel and the the nephron uh, tube just below the the Bowman's capsule and all the way down and around the loop of Henle and up and around into the distal convoluted distal convoluted tubule and so the processes that happen happen both between the between the nephron and the blood vessels and between the nephron and the interstitium uh, the tissue that surrounds the nephron and so if we look at it in a slightly different way and get rid of all the writing I just made on the other picture um, you can see that this nephron is quite complex and it is not as straight and nicely lined and, and laid out as our simple diagram that we uh, used would have us believe. In fact, even this diagram is pretty simple. And, but as you can see, there is interface between the nephron and the blood vessels in various areas. And this helps with the exchange of materials, both the secretion of materials and the reabsorption of uh, materials through the uh, through the, the various areas of the nephron as it passes through and is interwoven with these blood vessels. And I hope that that's going to uh, help a little bit with uh, your understanding of how this exchange takes place. It's not that the that the blood vessel is simply embedded in nothingness. It is, in fact, embedded in a richness of blood vessels and tissues. And that's all for now. I'm Derek Keats, and this resource is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution License.